Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Yes. 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 I paused right there because when I walked in at the end of Sunday school, I heard some joyful noise. Yes. Amen. Yes. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Yes, Lord. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generation. So we are so grateful once again to be found in the house of prayer, the house of praise, the house of worship, yes. where we have gathered to praise him and to worship yes. him in yes. spirit and in truth. Yes. Yes. We welcome those who are here in person as well as those who are joining us virtually. And we also welcome our special guest this morning, the Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, Zeta Phi Zeta Chapter, who are sharing with us for a prematureness, prematurity awareness program. So we thank God for them and their service to our community. Amen. As always, we acknowledge we don't own the rights to any of the music that we will be sharing in this morning's worship, but we thank God for those who share their gifts with the kingdom of God so that we might worship with them in spirit and in truth. Amen. So this morning, as always, let us just praise the Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed is the man that walketh in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, mm -hmm. and in his law doeth he meditate day and night. Yeah. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his seed. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. <clears throat> Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor are sinners, nor are sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the, of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. I've read Psalms 1 through 6. May God have a blessing to the reader, the hearers, and also the doers of his word.
We're grateful to our deacons, our deaconesses, our ushers, greeters, our AV team, for everyone who makes up the Good Hope family. How many of you know that God is up to something? There's never a time that he's not up to something. He's always working on our behalf. He's getting ready to do a work here in Good Hope Baptist Church. And as sure as God is getting ready to do a work here, let me warn you, there's an enemy who doesn't want to see God's work go forward. But greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. shall do what God has ordained us to do. Mm -hmm. You just know when the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. When he's present in us, when you show up, you can't help but be present in this place. Our announcements for the week, uh, we will have choir rehearsal Tuesday at 6.30. There will be no Bible study on Wednesday as we'll be, I'm sure, making preparations for Thanksgiving Day. So happy Thanksgiving to everyone on Amen. this Amen. week. Amen. And also at, uh, at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning, we will be having youth choir rehearsal. Preferably, we will have our youth choir Worshiping with us on next Sunday. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. I would just like to thank everyone so much for their great participation on our um, non perishable food drive and the boxes. They were beautiful. All the decorations that you did with the boxes they were beautiful. the smiles on the faces of all those people that received the boxes that was all worth the while and uh, the church was just and, and we prayed for them we invited them to the church and we had our prayer warriors with us we just had a wonderful day we just had a wonderful day just giving praying and thanking God for what they had received so in the near future please keep your eyes and ears open for our next outreach event so thank you very much Good Hope Baptist Church and um, Pastor Lewis, we want to thank you for allowing us to be here today. On behalf of our international president, Ed Valerie Hollingsworth Baker, our southern regional director, Keisha M. Beasley, and our Louisiana State Director, Renee Bourgeois, I bring you greetings from Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated. My name is Kenyatta Barnes, and I am the president of the Zeta Phi Beta chapter of Alexandria's. Um, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority was founded January the 16th, 1920, on the campus of Howard University by five women. We refer to as our five pearls. <clears throat> they founded Zeta Phi Beta on the principles of service, scholarship, sisterhood, and final womanhood. And in building on the principle of service, 50 years ago, we partnered with Marcia Dine. And through that partnership, we have raised money and brought awareness to our communities about prematurity awareness, which is why we're here today. So we wanted to come here today to Good Hope to make you all aware of prematurity awareness. And, um, <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, just bring you away, make you aware of that today. So today we came here, we passed our ribbons, um, which is the purple color for prematurity awareness, and we want to thank you all for allowing us to, to fellowship with you all today. Before I take my seat, I would like to ask that all the ladies of Zeta Phi Beta please stand. Thank you, Hope Baptist Church and Reverend Lewis for allowing us to fellowship with you all today. We want to thank our 
sister, um, Margaret Manson, for allowing her to come and um, be with y'all today. On behalf of the we would like to present the host with a token of appreciation. Choosing to worship with us on this morning, Amen. along Amen. with Sorrow and Madness. just working so diligently. For the kingdom of God here at Good Hope. Now, our outreach is not over, Amen. our outreach will be ongoing. Yesterday, we had a, uh, a, a, a goal of addressing the needs of people in the community who are not a part of the Good Hope family or potentially not a part of any church family. But as I said, our outreach will be ongoing. We are preparing to do an additional outreach during the Christmas holidays. This outreach will be open to both members and non-members. So if you have a family that you would like to recommend for a food box, or if you yourself are in need of one or know a family in need of one, please get in contact with either myself, Sister Angela Talley, or Sister Margaret Mathis. We went above and beyond on the, the goal for this past outreach. So thank you again. For being living examples of our mission of loving God, loving all people, and making disciples. Amen. Amen. I just can't thank God for you enough. Amen. Let us keep working together as we, as my late grandmother would say, as we're walking up the King's Highway. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Lord. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. Psalm number 103. 103rd number of Psalm. This morning we'll be considering the first five verses of that song. Psalm number 103, verses 1 through 5. And these words should sound familiar to us as David in these words, bless the Lord, O my soul, <clears throat> and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercy. Yes, Lord. Verse 5, and concluding, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. <clears throat> you may be seated in the presence of the Lord as we conclude our series on this morning, Why Should I Be Thankful? Why should I be thankful? There's nothing wrong with being thankful for having a turkey on the table. There's nothing wrong with being thankful for friends and family coming from far and near. There's nothing wrong with being thankful for food, clothing, and shelter, and the material things of life. But through this series, we found that we have many reasons to be thankful outside of material things. We can be thankful for the fact that my cousin friend has come in from Houston this morning. So in the first part of this series, we looked at the 100th number of Psalm that says, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why should I be thankful? For the Lord is. So before we get to the Lord is good, we need to be thankful for the fact first that the Lord is. Then we can be thankful for the fact that he is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. So if God is good all the time, if his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations, then that means I always have a reason to be thankful. Oh, last week in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians in chapter 5, verses 16 through 18, Paul said, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. Why should I be thankful? For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In other words, God wants us to be thankful. God wants us to rejoice. God wants us to pray. Why? Because when we get thanks in everything, when we know that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the call according to his purpose, then even when it's cloudy outside. We can be thankful. When the sun is shining, we can be thankful. When we have money in our pocket, we can be thankful. When we're flat broke, we can be thankful. When we're surrounded by people, we can be 
thankful when we're all alone. We can be thankful. Why? Because we know that God is working on our behalf. So today, why should I be thankful? When we started this series, we looked at Psalm 100, which was a corporate call to praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land. But today, as we look at Psalm 103, we're looking at a personal call to praise. Bless the Lord, O my soul. The psalmist said, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The psalmist is speaking to himself. He didn't wait for the preacher to say, let's give the Lord some praise on this morning. He didn't have to wait for the choir to start singing in order for him to bless God. But when he looked back over his life and saw what the Lord had already brought him through, he said, I'm just going to go ahead and bless him all by myself. Anybody here ever had to bless the Lord all by yourself? The preacher wasn't around. The deacon wasn't around. The choir member wasn't around. The hammer wasn't playing. But we realized that we had to bless God because of what is in me, not what's around me, not what's in my house, not what I have, not my possessions, but I will bless the Lord just because he is I should be just as thankful by myself as I am when I'm in the sanctuary. I shouldn't have to wait for somebody to pump me up and prime me on Sunday morning before I make a decision to bless the Lord. I ought to bless the Lord in my house. And can I share something with you? If you ain't blessing God in your house, then you might not truly be blessing God in his house. Then the psalmist go, David goes on to say, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all, all, all means, forget not all his benefits. I should be thankful for everything that God has done, is doing, and we can even go ahead and be thankful in advance for what he's going to do. Whether it's big or whether it's small, I should be thankful. Whether it's physical or whether it's spiritual, I should be thankful. But David said, lest I get lifted up in pride and start to think about what I've accomplished. Oh, wait a minute. I, I, I guess nobody here has this issue, so I'll just be like the psalmist and talk to myself for a moment. Because every now and then, I find myself starting to get a little too big for my own britches. All right. And start to think about how smart I am. How talented I am. But it doesn't last long because I realize that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, Not forgetting what he has done. There is nothing that I have done that is good that God didn't do through. Now, there's some stuff that I've done. Mm. That I can't give the Lord credit for. Oh, well, I guess I'm still talking to myself. Okay. <laughs> Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Uh -huh. And forget not all his benefits. I should be thankful. I should not forget his benefits because that will keep me from getting lifted up in pride. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says every good and perfect gift is from above. Mm. 
So anything, there was a song that says, everything that happened to me that was good, God did. God did. Yes. Forget not all his benefits. So what are some of his benefits? Those of us in the working world, we enjoy having jobs with benefits. Paid time off. Health insurance. We want our benefits. And some people get up high on in the high cotton and they have like a company car, a charge account. And, uh, I, I'm a state employee, I don't have that. Do <laughs> but those benefits are temporal. Because as soon as I lose my job, guess what? Those benefits are gone. But how many want to hear about the benefits that you'll never lose? In verse 3, the Lord forgiveth all. There's that word, all, again. He forgiveth all thy iniquity. He healeth all thy diseases. In other words, the Lord's healing is complete. He heals us spiritually. Forgiveth all thine iniquity. Yes, Lord. So let me pause here to talk about three words. There's one word, sin, which means to miss the mark. As is an archer who has his arrow and he's aiming for a target. Well, at least he's aiming for the target. But his arrow falls a little short of the target. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short. So when we sin, it's not just that we miss the bullseye. All right. But we don't even hit the target. But at least we're trying. Does it make it right? Does it give you any points? But at least you're trying. So just keep trying to hit the mark. There's another word. The word that we see here in the text, iniquity. Iniquity is when you ain't even concerned about hitting the target. One person says iniquity refers to the inter inner character and points to an intentional twisting of a given standard. In other words, you know where the target is. Uh -huh. But you intentionally mm -hmm. disregard the target. Mm -hmm. That's when we say, the Lord said, get off that you stuff as if. So I, I was making a joke with my wife on last night, um, I was trying to do something here at the church last night, and I have a Band-Aid on my finger. <laughs> Started bleeding a little bit, and I told my wife, I said, well, let me not get a Jesus complex because I'm shedding blood. <laughs> What is my point? Jesus' blood was shed for us to cover our sin, our iniquity, our church. But, oh, I, let me remind you, it was Jesus' blood, not my blood. I didn't come, I just shed a little bit of blood, but Jesus shed all of his blood. My blood has no redemptive power because like David, I was shaping in iniquity and in sin that my mother conceived me. So my blood 
can't do anything for you, but I'm talking about the blood of Jesus. But back to iniquity, we know what God has said, but we think we're big and bad enough to do opposite of what he said anyway. But yet, because of the blood of Jesus, one of my benefits is that he forgives when I come to him and repent. Some folks think it's just automatic. Iniquity. Intentional twisting of a given standard. And then there's transgression, which is a willful rebellion against the standard. Transgression is similar to trespassing. You see a sign up that says no trespassing. But you decide you're going to go over there anyway. God has given us a sign that says there are no trespassing. But am I the only one in the building today who finds myself from time to time seeing the no trespassing sign and going, Lord help us. But yet, one of my benefits of being a child of God is that he forgives all. He healeth all thy diseases. So not only does God heal us spiritually, but he heals us physically. But remember, sometimes healing means that God keeps people here on earth. Other times, healing means that it takes people to heaven. So either way, what did Paul say? Absent from the body means to be present with the Lord. So even if my disease takes me out of this earth, it doesn't mean that God did not heal me. As a matter of fact, that means I'm better off now. Oh, I'm just taking my time today. And he goes on to say, who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Some translators translate this verse as redeemed your life from the pit, meaning physical death or sheol, another word that is translated into the English word hell. God has redeemed us again by the blood of Jesus. He has redeemed us from the pit. He has saved our lives from destruction. The wages of sin is death. But thank God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Oh, yeah. Jesus paid the price for our redemption. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. And then he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. The Lord gives us these benefits because... He loves us because his love never ends. And when we are covered by his love, then he will shower us not only with his love, but also with his mercy. Anybody here need some mercy today? And in that fifth verse, he says, Who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. Some translators, again, translate this verse as, Who satisfies you. Not just satisfying your mouth, but who satisfies you. Another translation says, Who satisfies your desires. Psalm 37 and 4 says, Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. So the psalmist is not only praising God for spiritual benefits, now he's praising God for physical benefits. And when our desires line up with God's desires for our lives, then he will give us. Because remember, look at Psalm 37 and 4 again. Delight yourself in the Lord. Then he will give you the desires of your heart. So when you delight in him, 
He will put the desires in your heart. And when he puts the desire in your heart, then he will give you the desire. Why? Because he's the one who put it there in the first place. And he can even give us health in our later years. Your youth is renewed like the eagle. Just this week, I heard about two ladies over the age of 100 who made their transition to glory. Both of them in good health. Both of them in their right mind. One of them described as a spry, sassy lady in her hundreds. But yet the Lord just allowed them to go to sleep. When I think about youth being renewed, I'm reminded of Caleb, who along with Joshua was one of two people who made it into the promised land who was over the age of 20. And Caleb said, and now behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said, these 40 and 5 years. Even since the Lord spake this word unto Moses while the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now, lo, I am this day four score and five or eighty-five years old. And look at this next verse. As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me. As my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war both to go out and to come in. He is as strong at 85 as he was at 40. Why? Because the Lord blessed him. And we know what Isaiah said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So that or, mm, that just gives us some of the benefits. If you read the rest of Psalm 103, you will see even more benefits that we have. But for that reason, is there anybody here who wants to bless the Lord for his benefits? Is there anybody here who can give God praise because God has been is there anybody here who's willing to let somebody else know how good God has been to you and also let them know that the same God who blessed me will bless you also? So why should I be thankful? I should be thankful because the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Why should I be thankful? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning me. Why should I be thankful? I should be thankful for all his benefits unto me. So often we ask God to bless us. And how many of us do want God to bless us? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with asking God to bless us. We need him to bless us. But how many people here are willing to turn around and bless God? Why should I be thankful? We have so many things to be thankful for. But above all, let us be thankful for God. Not simply for what he's done, but being thankful for who he is. As we now extend the invitation to discipleship, as we stand all over the building. As I said, I have certain benefits on my job. The reason I have those benefits is because I'm on that job. Sometimes people want to receive benefits without being named a designated beneficiary. 
But on today, I invite you to become a beneficiary of the Most High God. The Bible says that we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of our lives. <coughs> Paul wrote, if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus yes. and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, we shall be saved. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. So the first step in receiving the benefits is to become a son, to become a daughter of God. Through, first of all, acknowledging that you have sinned and come short of God's glory. Admit that you are a sinner. Believe that the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, that he was born of a virgin, that he died on a cross, that he rose on the third day. And confess with your mouth and believe in your heart the Lord Jesus and that God raised him from the dead. It's not a magic form. The price has already been paid by Jesus Christ himself. All you have to do is accept him. Church membership won't cut it. There'll be some church members in hell too. <laughs> Have a few preachers down there. A few choir members, a few deacons, ushers. In hell. Because they joined a church. But they didn't join the church. You know the folk to whom Jesus will say, I made, I never knew you. Depart from me. But all the good things I did, all the food boxes we gave out, all the sermons that we preached. To have Jesus say, you worker of iniquity. This thing has to be real, my brothers and sisters. Become a part of the church. And then become the part of a local assembly. Where you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If the Lord is pressing upon your heart to become a part of this fellowship, I said, again, if the Lord is pressing on your heart to become a part of this fellowship, I don't want anybody here who God doesn't send. Yes, I, I'll say it again. I don't want anybody here who God did not send. Because we have enough to go through with the ones who God did send. <laughs> From the pulpit to the door. <laughs> but at least if God sent us, he can work through us because we're in the place where he wants us to be. Amen. Amen. Congregation of Good Hope knows our invitation to discipleship has been getting longer lately. So there's a reason. Because all the singing, all the shouting, all the things that we do are null and void if we're not in Christ Jesus. And it's not simply an invitation to membership, it's an invitation to discipleship. God called us to make disciples, but first we have to go out and get them. He didn't tell us to sit here and wait for them to come. He told us to go. But we can't go if he hasn't sent us. We can't tell somebody about a Jesus we don't know for ourselves. So I want to make sure not only that we give this invitation to discipleship, but each and every one of you walks out of here equipped to bring somebody to Christ yourself. Amen. 
it's not just the preacher's job on Sunday morning to quote unquote open the doors of the church. The doors of the church are always open, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And if somebody comes to you and says, what must I do to be saved? If you saved yourself, then just tell them what you did. Nancy Young has come to rededicate her life to Jesus Christ with Amen. the symbol of being rebaptized. We praise God for your decision today, Sister Young, to make sure that you know that you know that you know. <laughs> That you're on the right track. Amen. We thank God for the gifts that he has placed in you. For those of you who may not have been next door, there's some artwork next door that our young people did under the guidance of Sister Young. Very creative. We thank God for you, and we will be getting with you with the details of when we can make that rededication take place. Let's praise God again, sir. church. I've been serving. I've been dedicated, but I want to rededicate. I want to get rebaptized and reaffirm my relationship with Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. And now for our benediction. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. And as we leave this place, may we never leave his presence. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. And the people of God responded by saying, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Happy Thanksgiving. And may God continue to bless you as you enjoy his benefit.